Hey guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a Tuesday tip. Now you may have guessed from the title what our topic is today and that's cichlids. Now I find cichlids to be fascinating because they're one of the most diverse and oldest families of fishes found on the planet. You know cichlids have a couple of unique characteristics the first of which is that they're all originally saltwater fish so they're referred to as secondary freshwater fish and this is why a lot of them not only have such beautiful bright vivid colors but it's also why a lot of them as well are extremely tolerant of harder water with a higher TDS making them strong tough beautiful and fascinating because they all exhibit some sort of parental care as well now they use a lot of different strategies from breeding from uh, cave spawning to mouth brooding to open water spawning to even using what's called communal spawning where there are other fish will help the parents raise the fry so they're very very fascinating the other thing that all cichlids have in common is that they all have what's called a pharyngeal structure and it's basically like two little jaws in the base of their throat that have a complex set of muscles allowing them to grind the food in their throat so their lips often act more like our hands and their throat acts more like our teeth and this has allowed them to adapt to a wide range of diets even being able to break down plants that other fish can't because of breaking up those cell walls now I know many of you think of cichlids as the big tank busting beautiful bruisers but today I'm going to show you some of the species that I love because not all cichlids are created equal. So let's take a look. Arguably the smallest cichlid, I know you guys have seen my Maltese before. At about an inch and a quarter max size, they are really tiny and unique because they use those shells in order to, you know, protect themselves as well as their fry from predators. Super fascinating, lovely little fish, and there's tons of shell-dwelling species that are appropriate for home aquaria. I think they're one of the most appropriate for the average hobbyist because of their small stature. Now, like most other cichlids, they definitely set up a hierarchy, meaning you need plenty of shells and enough space for them to avoid each other during spawning displays. Now those were an example of dwarf African species, specifically from Tanganyika. This is a South American cichlid. And you know, often cichlids have a reputation for not being community friendly, but epistogrammas like this Borelli blue are super suitable for a community aquarium. You can even set up a 20 gallon community with a lot of epistogrammas. Now these are a great example of sort of the dimorphism that some cichlids have between male and female. The males have adapted to these really colorful, colorful patterns in order to attract females who choose their mates based on these courting displays. You can see females are much less colorful, although lovely in their own right. Often epistogramma females will fire up yellow when ready to spawn. Here we see a male and a female. Because of their breedability, there's a lot of cichlids that have been line bred to bring out beautiful color traits. This ep epistogramma orange flash is a great example of that. These triple reds are another great example of line bred variants bred by hobbyists and isolated out through generations. You can see the female is yellow and fired up ready for spawning and the male has more coloration on his fins. Cockatoys I think are one of the better beginner cichlids for your average hobbyists. They're beautiful, they're sassy, they're relatively easy to breed and they do great with a wide variety of tetras, barbs, and other peaceful community fish. It's just important that you provide them adequate spots for their spawning. In this tank, it is that little ceramic cave. Although driftwood or coconut huts or, or the like would all work just as well. Another favorite of mine are Laodicara dorsagera, another dwarf American cichlid. 
They're a wild type, but when they're in spawning dress, their colors are phenomenal, getting a very iridescent shimmer. The female's getting a very red to purple belly. And again, these are very well suited to a planet aquarium as well as a community aquarium. Absolutely beautiful little fish. These guys are sometimes called the smiling acara because of that marking around their mouth. Now you guys are familiar with these guys from other videos I've done, but I think that Pelvicochromus crebensis, as well as other families of the West African dwarf cichlids are really underrated as an aquarium fish. They're phenomenally beautiful, relatively easy to breed, and awesome in a planet aquarium. Now don't think that just the line bred variants of Epistogramma have incredible color and fins. Look at this wild Trifasciatus. Those dorsal rays are insane. He's not even in breeding dress, but when he is, he gets a solid blue shimmer on his cheek and whole way down his side. A truly phenomenally beautiful fish. Look at those dorsal extensions. Just incredible. Now, there are literally thousands of species of cichlids with new ones being discovered all the time. They are one of those fishes that gets a lot of attention from the scientists because of their diversity and speciation as well as their applications as food fish and pets in our aquariums. That isn't to say that they're all big tank busters like this. My goal of this video was to show you guys that there's quite a range of dwarf cichlids that are absolutely appropriate for the more average aquarist. Epistogrammas, rams, Laodicara, shellies, and various other tanks that I'll show you in upcoming weeks. Cichlids are beautiful, smart, fascinating creatures that exhibit incredible parental care and can be tolerant of a wide range of parameters. As with any other fish we choose to keep in our aquarium, it's absolutely vital to understand what they need in order to provide the appropriate environment for them. You need to learn about what their spawning is and what decor they require in order to maintain their aggression as well as their breeding and feeding strategies. Anyway, I hope you guys got something out of this video. Special thanks to Joey for this uh, cichlid footage of the big guys. As always, make sure you guys stop by my Instagram, my Facebook, and my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. Let me know below if you'd like to see me do some species spotlights on cichlids.